Welcome to some new r slash malicious compliance stories, where people comply to the letter, but not the spirit of a request. I hope you had a great day. Thanks for all the likes and comments on the last video. If you would like to support this channel, please hit the like button and consider subscribing if you enjoy the content. And now let's start with the first story. It's called The Right Company. This was 15 years ago. I was a precocious young IT tech. I used to fly domestically once or twice a month to the company's new factory to fix something or help with a big install in an area that was being opened. I would often volunteer for these trips, something the older guys with kids appreciated. They were past their traveling days, or at least past wanting to wake up that early. It often involved a 6.30 flight up, back down 18.30 the same day. I didn't mind as I got overtime, beginning when I left the house, ending when I got home. When I first started doing these trips, my girlfriend would drop me off at the airport. It's only 5 miles from my house and she would be up early for her commute or to head to the allotment anyway. A couple of months in, I submitted my expenses and when our colleague pointed out I hadn't claimed my mileage to and from the airport. It only came to a couple of quid each way, but why not? It was a legit expense. So I did. Q, my boss, rejecting the claim. Apparently, to claim for this and not parking would mean my wife was using the car for hire or reward. I've since found out this isn't the case, but anyway. On the next trip, I booked a local minicab to take me and he was there to pick me up as well. The cost to the company has now gone from £2 each way to £10 for the morning journey before 6am and £7 for the return. You shouldn't be claiming for this. We have an account with the airport transfer service. I'll do this once, but next time book with the right company. I go to the departmental secretary. I have my boss's email which I forwarded to her. She explains the airport transfers company on account is luxury limousines. Not big stretch American cars for prom nights, but proper luxury vehicles for executives. We comply with my boss's wishes. Next trip a man arrives at my Aunt Tara's house in an up and coming area of the city in a BMW, dressed in a suit and a proper chauffeur's hat. He takes my luggage, opens the door for me, checks the temperature, asks if I want music. I half expect a hot towel and a bowl of from mixed nuts. That evening he meets me in arrivals with a little printed sign with my name on it. He walks me to the BMW in the expensive short stay car park. This is the one and only time someone's done that for me and I've flown 20 to 30 times a year for my entire life. I'm still in my now dusty workwear. Cargo trousers, branded polo, steel toe boots. Being driven home in a long wheelbase 7 series with a chauffeur with head. Secretary tells me those journeys cost the company £120, which will be charged back to the department at the end of the month. When boss finds out, he hurriedly asks secretary to create a new policy. One that allows me to at least book a local minicab. It's only when we need to lug some heavy gear up to the side that boss allows us to expense fuel on our own cars. The next story is called No Company Parking. When I started at my new company, we had used all assigned parking spot in the adjacent parking garage and I was given a spot in a building a couple of blocks away. When I got in early one morning and had to be let in by security as the building was not yet unlocked, I talked with the security guard briefly and this started a bit of a friendship. After a week or so, he asked why I was always coming through the front door instead of through the parking garage and I explained my situation. He ended up giving me one of the extra spots that was assigned to the security staff. I was only allowed to park there Monday to Thursday as they needed the spot for cleaning crews on Friday. This spot is only about 20 feet from the pedestrian bridge to the building, so it is a pretty nice setup. We also have two company visitor spots in the same adjacent lot. However, they are on the top floor, along with the rest of the spots assigned to our company, exposed to the sun and require walking down three flights to get to the pedestrian bridge. We have had a senior engineer visiting from a different office for the last two weeks, parking in the visitor spot. On Tuesday we went to our cars together and he saw where I was parked. Well, when I got to work the next day, he was already in my parking spot. I headed up to one of the visitor spots and let him know that he needed to move his vehicle out of my spot or his car might be towed. We are right downtown and have many people who park in this garage without permission. He told me that it was fine, don't worry about it, it was a company parking spot and that I could just stay in the visitor spot. I told him that I really did not think that was a good idea and tried to explain, but he brushed me off. I followed up with an email, letting him know that the spot was not leased by our company, but that I just had permission to park there until a spot opened in the garage. 
I park the Meyer sign spot in the other parking garage. The bossman does not like non-visitors parking in the visitor spot, so I was not about to stay there and didn't worry about it, just as I was told. Well, come lunchtime, the senior engineer comes storming back into the office. Apparently, security guards saw that the vehicle parked in my spot was not my Civic, but rather a Tesla and decided to have the vehicle towed. Nothing major came from it, but I hope the guy learned his lesson. The last story is called Wrong Delivery. I used to live on the Azores and work as an adventure guide. In my work, we use action cameras to capture our guests in the moment. This island is the adventurous smacker, it's raw nature, waterfalls etc. And it would be difficult and even dangerous to take pictures slash videos while dangling in a rope from a 30 meter high waterfall during canoeing for example. It also allows the guests to enjoy the activities 100%. It was Black Friday and I found a great deal on a kit for water sports that included a case, hand straps, a floating handle, a case, etc. from the same manufacturer of the action camera. So I know it's quality stuff. Here's the problem. The Azores is a small island in the Atlantic Ocean. So packages that get sent to this island sometimes take a month or more to deliver. And it doesn't help that the local post carrier is terrible to deal with. Everything is handled manually, so things take time. So a month goes by and I finally get a letter in the box saying I have a parcel waiting at the postal office. I grab my bike and make my way down to collect it. I get home and notice that half of the stuff I ordered is missing for some reason. I jump on customer support and ask why they have not delivered everything. They explained that there was a mistake. So I said that he could just send me the missing items and we call it a day. He said that this was a kid and that he couldn't just send me the items separately for some reason. So I said ok, then just refund me for the missing items then. He then tells me that the items are worth more separately, so he can't refund the missing items. He then goes on to explain that in order for him to refund me, I would have to return the package that I already received. That way I could just reorder it again. However, I pointed out that now the kit sells for 25% more than what I paid for it. So how did he plan to solve that? He says that he can't give me a coupon, but the best he could do was to give me a 10 euro credit. But this would still mean that I had to pay more for the same kit. At this point I was fuming and frustrated, so I just told him to email me a return label and told him how terrible this experience had been. I hung up the phone and packaged up everything again, printed the label and went back to the postal office to send it away. Because I really needed these items, I thought I might as well reorder it, just like the guy on customer support said, even if it cost a bit more this time. But this time I decided I would gamble and order it from Amazon instead. You see, on my way home from the postal office, I remembered that I had previously ordered other stuff from Amazon a few months prior. I remembered that I was able to collect a full refund because they couldn't deliver on the set date due to me living on a remote island and the local postal service took forever to deliver. I jump on Amazon and find out that the company has an Amazon store. I put all the items I needed and a little extra stuff that I wanted for my camera and press order. And just as I thought, expected delivery two weeks from now. There is literally no way that they can deliver in that time. Three weeks go by and I hop on Amazon to watch the status of my order and wouldn't you know, a glorious little button has appeared saying that I'm eligible for a refund as the package seems to have gone missing. Fast forward one week later. I get a knock on my door, it's the delivery man from the postal service and a box with a smile in his hand. I thank him, close the door and rip the parcel open. Everything is there. I received a full refund of 200 euros. And a week later, I got a full refund for the first delivery that I sent back, plus a credit of 10 euros to use on their website. So all in all, they lost almost 350 euros and camera gear rough around 200 euros instead of refunding me the difference or sending me the missing items. Thanks, I guess. And with that, we end today's video. Let me know what you think about the stories. On a scale of 1 to 10, how would you rate the stories and today's video? I hope you enjoyed the video. If you like what I do and want to support me, please subscribe and hit the like button. I hope you have a great day. Stay safe. Bye bye.